Imagine the year is 1969, and you and your family are crowded around the TV set in your living room. But the screen is fuzzy, so your dad is behind it adjusting the antenna. Hurry, Dad, you say, we're going to miss it. In one of your hands, you clutch a toy rocket. You've been waiting all year for this day, along with people all over the world. Your dad twists the antenna, and suddenly the picture becomes clear. You and your siblings cheer. You see the gray, rocky surface of the moon and a spacecraft which has landed on it. You watch as the first astronaut, Neil Armstrong, climbs out of the spacecraft and steps on the moon. You can't believe your eyes. It's finally happened. You're amazed and inspired by astronaut Neil Armstrong's courage and skill as the first human to ever touch the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong was born in Wapakoneta, Ohio, on August 5, 1930. When he was very small, Neil was fascinated by airplanes. His father took him to many air shows where he watched in amazement as planes flew overhead. Later he went on his first plane ride when he was six. He loved watching airplanes, but wanted to fly one too. When Neil was 14, he started taking flying lessons, and at 16 earned his pilot's license the same age most kids get their driver's license. Neil was also interested in the way planes flew, also called aeronautics. In his basement, he even built his own wind tunnel and performed experiments to understand how flight works. Growing up, Neil's neighbor had a telescope, which he let Neil look into and observe outer space. Neil was amazed at what he saw there and curious to learn more. Young Neil was also a Boy Scout and earned his Eagle Scout Award, among other scouting awards. In 1947, at age 17, Neil studied aeronautical engineering, the science of how planes fly, at Purdue University. While at the university, Neil also joined the Navy and trained to become a fighter pilot. He became skilled at the dangerous job of taking off and landing on aircraft carriers. In 1941, he served in the Korean War. Once while flying a mission, his jet was hit by anti-aircraft fire. He turned back towards safety, but had to eject over the water, which can be very dangerous. After he made it back to land, soldiers in a jeep found him and took him back to safety. During the Korean War, he flew 78 missions and spent 121 hours in the air. He earned several medals during his service as well. After the Korean War, Neil returned to college to study engineering. One interesting thing about his time in college was he helped direct two musicals with his girlfriend, including Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. He also played baritone in the marching band. In 1955, after graduating college and earning his master's degree, Neil became a test pilot. During the test flight of a B-29 Superfortress, while he was very high, he began to lose his engines. He and the other pilot tried many different things to regain control of the plane, They lost another engine and finally made it back down by slowly circling through the air with only one engine left. Over the next several years, Neil tested more than 200 different aircraft. He also got the chance to test one of the early rocket-powered aircraft, the Bell X-1B. During one daring flight, he flew a jet over 207,000 feet, which is very, very high. This aircraft was an early model for future spacecraft. At this time, the United States was involved in what was called the Cold War with the Soviet Union. It was called a Cold War because there wasn't much actual fighting between the two countries, but they had very different ideas about how a country should be run, and neither wanted the other one to spread their own ideas. For this reason, both countries did a lot of spying on each other and supported other countries with the same ideas. Both countries were afraid the other would get the upper hand. So in 1957, when the Soviet Union launched the first satellite into space, called Sputnik 1, the United States became very worried. People all over the world watched as Sputnik orbited the Earth, blinking in the night sky. The launch of Sputnik started what was called the Space Race. The United States and the Soviet Union wanted to be the first to space and then to the moon. Each country was also worried the other would be able to use weapons from space. 
Shortly after this, President Dwight Eisenhower created the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, to help in the space race. But in 1961, the Soviet Union won the next space race competition by launching the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin. The United States was behind and even more worried now. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy said in a speech to the United States that it is very important that they land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. Nothing will be more important and difficult and expensive, he said. From this, the Apollo missions were born. The goal of the Apollo mission was to land astronauts on the moon. Not long after this, in 1962, Neil applied to NASA and passed many tests to become an astronaut. His first assignment was the Gemini mission in 1966. The purpose of the Gemini 5 mission was to blast out of Earth's atmosphere and orbit the Earth before docking with another vehicle. During the mission, the Gemini 8 went out of control, but Neil was able to keep his cool and correct the problem, bringing the spacecraft safely back to Earth in the Pacific Ocean. Everyone was impressed at how Neil was able to stay in control even during very stressful and scary situations. The leaders at NASA knew a person like this would be perfect for the mission that would come next. Neil's next big adventure would be the Apollo mission. If they could complete this goal, they would be in the lead of the space race with the Soviet Union. Many believed this could never be done, but many smart engineers and scientists and brave pilots were committed to accomplishing their goal. Neil and the other astronauts trained for many months before launch day arrived. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report a feel good. In 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, On July 16, 1969, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the Saturn V rocket launched the Apollo 11 spacecraft and its astronauts out of Earth's atmosphere. The astronauts were Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Inside the spacecraft, it was extremely loud. Neil's heart rate peaked at 110 beats per minute. It took about three days for the astronauts to get to the moon. Once they reached the moon, the lunar module, codename Eagle, with astronauts Neil and Buzz inside, detached from the command module and descended to the moon. The third astronaut, Michael Collins, would stay in the command vehicle and orbit the moon, waiting until they were finished visiting. A landing site had been picked out by Mission Control, but as Neil and Buzz were going down, they saw that the spot was filled with boulders and would be dangerous to land there. So Neil used the controls to find a safer spot. Fuel was draining fast. They'd have to find a spot or run out of fuel and crash. Neil kept his cool and found a safe spot and landed with only 45 seconds of fuel left in the tank. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. The lunar module landed in an area on the moon called the Sea of Tranquility. After making sure everything with the lunar module was in order, Neil and Buzz dressed in the EVA suits, and Neil Armstrong went out first. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. When his boot touched the surface of the moon, he spoke the famous words, That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. On Earth, around 530 million people were watching the moon landing. Buzz Aldrin joined Neil on the moon next. They began to move around and explore the moon. They did research, examined what it was like to walk on the moon, and planted an American flag on its surface. They also spoke to the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, took pictures and gathered 47 pounds of moon dust and rocks for research back on Earth. 
They also left human artifacts on the moon, such as pictures of people, audio recordings in different languages, and medals with the names and faces of astronauts and Soviet Union cosmonauts who had passed away during the space race. They spent a total of two and a half hours outside the lunar module before heading back in. When it was time to go back up, Neil and Buzz flew the module off the surface of the moon and met back up with Michael, who had been orbiting the moon in the command module, waiting for them. Here they left the lunar module behind to have less weight when they flew the Apollo spacecraft back to Earth. After entering Earth's atmosphere, the Apollo 11 spacecraft splashed down into the Pacific Ocean and they were picked up by a team who was waiting for their return. But the mission wasn't quite over yet. For 21 days, the three astronauts had to wait in a closed-off space to make sure their bodies were safe after being on the moon. No one knew whether there were living organisms on the moon, so this was to be sure they hadn't picked up any alien diseases. After the successful Apollo mission, Neil decided not to fly in space again, but for a while he did tour and speak with reporters and speak publicly about the heroic mission. He also taught at the University of Cincinnati for a while and later served on the board of directors of several American companies. He mostly kept to himself, but did some interviews and things like write letters to young men who earned their Eagle Scout Award like he did. Throughout his life, Neil was known for his quiet humility the ability to not draw attention to himself or brag. He was also very driven to excel at subjects that interested him, such as flight and space. He knew hard work, practice, and determination were required to become good at something. He learned how to keep his cool when in stressful situations, which proved to be very useful as a military pilot, test pilot, and astronaut. Is it easy sometimes for you to become impatient or lose your temper? We could all practice to be a little more patient with others, to take a few deep breaths, calm down, and try not to get upset. This is also useful when something stressful happens. Like Neil, we can learn to calm ourselves, take a deep breath, and focus on the problem at hand rather than lose control. Can you think of other ways to keep your cool when the going gets tough? Next time you feel stressed, remember Neil and the importance of keeping your cool.